Now, in this video, we will be talking about what the directional cosine is all about and how do we use it. Okay, so but before we can discuss this, we need an illustration. So let us take a look at this simple setup of the three dimensional axis. Okay, so we have this vector A, uh, we shall call this point, point A. Okay, and uh, this vector shall be vector A. Okay, so there's this vector A that goes by um, the vector of 1, 2, 3, which means x equals to 1, um, y equals to 2, and z equals to 3. Okay, so in order to fully understand what exactly is going on, you need to first understand that, well, this vector OA, okay, makes an angle with the x-axis, with the y-axis, as well as with the z-axis. Okay, now in order to visualize, how do we find um, this angle? Okay, let's say this angle, we shall call it theta, theta x, right, which is the angle that this vector OA makes with the x-axis. So, how do we uh, find this angle? Okay, we need to understand that there's this um, right angle triangle. Okay, so, so if I were to try my best to draw out this three-dimensional setup, okay, so hopefully it can become, uh, it makes a bit more sense to you. Okay, so, so this is how it looks like. You move one unit by the positive x-axis, two units by the positive y-axis, and three units upwards, vertically upwards. Right now, you should be able to see or try your best to visualize that there is the right angle triangle here uh, that goes like this, okay? Uh, one, uh, zero to one along the x-axis. And from this point, uh, join to the point A, uh, that looks a bit like this. Uh, this is not very straight. Let me try to draw a better straight line. Okay, well, I guess this is the best. Right, so you do see this right angle triangle, which is 0, A, and let's call this point here X. Okay, this point here called X. Okay, big X. Right, um, in a two dimensional view, okay, this is how the right angle triangle will look like. Okay, it's a right angle triangle, and this is my X, and this is the point A. Okay, are you following? Alright, so it's not that bad, isn't it? Okay, now, to find this angle, this angle, by the way, will be your theta. Okay, well, theta x, we shall call it theta x, which is because it is actually the angle that the OA, the vector A, makes with the x-axis. And bear in mind that this OX is part of the x-axis, which is one unit. Okay, so, now how do we then find this angle? Well, using this setup, you start to realize that it's actually not that difficult um, to find this angle using your um, basic trigonometry, right? So this OX is basically the one, okay? Because it's one unit of your uh, one unit of your X, okay? So it's one unit of the X. We know this as one, right? And um, this length here, OA, which is the hypotenuse side of this right angle triangle, is basically the mod of your uh, vector a, which uh, we all know there's one square, two square, three square added together and square root. So um, this portion here will be one over square root, uh, sorry, it's just square root 14. Okay, so in order to find this angle, we all understand that cosine theta x will then be one over square root 14. Okay, so, so in this case, we can find our theta x pretty easily, right? Just cosine inverse. Now let's try to push this a little bit further. And let's say we are interested to find um, another angle, okay? Let's um, the, which is the angle that the OA makes with the y-axis. Now it should be pretty difficult for us to visualize this now that this diagram is already pretty much uh, crowded. So let me fish out another one. Okay, here you go. And uh, we will need to scroll it down a little. Okay, let's scroll it down a little so that we can see the diagram more. Okay. Alright, now let us um, now pay attention to this vector again, the same setup with point A and uh, this is the vector A. And we're using a different color because we want to see, uh, pay attention to the different uh, right angle triangle. So this angle that the vector A makes with the y axis, uh, again we shall name it theta y. Okay, so I need to understand that um, there will be a right angle triangle again, uh, which is from this point on the y axis down. Okay, let me try again, draw a straighter line. Okay, here you go, this is the 90 degree. Okay, and uh, there you go, this is the right angle triangle. And uh, let's call this point Y. So you can see that your OYA 
is another right angle triangle with the angle here as theta y. Okay, so if we were to draw the two dimensional picture, okay, how does it look like? Well, it's going to look like a bit like this. Now, again, this is not a very straight line, so let me try again. Okay, all right, here you go. So, so we will be looking at this angle called theta y, and this O y value is actually two units, okay, because we understand it from here. Now, we move two positive units. Um, towards the positive y-axis and uh, this OA well the length of OA is the mod of A okay which is again the square root 14 that we understand it from all right okay so to find the angle OY uh, sorry theta y so cosine theta y again will be equal to 2 over square root 14 okay so you realize that you have two separate and different right angle triangles you can find the two angles now let's push this a little bit further uh, but now we shall not draw another picture and running out of space. Okay, but let's say uh, the angle that this this OA mixed with the Z axis. Let's call this theta Z. Okay, which is denoted by this green color angle. Okay, and now we again will be able to form a right angle triangle here. Uh, this being the right angle. Okay, and uh, this is my O O A Z. Okay, so again, if I were to reproduce this triangle in a two-dimensional space or two-dimensional form okay, you should be able to see something a little bit like this okay, and the angle here will be the angle that this vector OA mixed with the z-axis okay, so uh, this will be where the 90 degree is and um, this is our hypotenuse side again which is the mod of A uh, which is again square root 14 right? and uh, this is our OZ value which is 3 as we can see here Okay, three, three. Oh my God, uh, three. Okay, so this is three. Okay, so using our trigonometry knowledge again, we know that if I were to cosine theta z, uh, I will get um, three over square root fourteen. Okay, here you go. Now you realize that um, okay, it's not that bad. I just need to imagine the right angle triangle and all this, and well everything I can find right I can find all the angles that is uh, necessary for me. Okay, now if you study this three values even closely right you realize that hey they're all divided by the same value same number which is the square root 14 and divided by square root 14 which means divided by the length okay and this values at the numerator which is one two three is actually the coordinates the x the y and the z coordinates of this vector to begin with so in short right remember these three values now because i'm going to scroll down a little okay so some of it's going to be our view right the directional cosine says or rather, uh, what we learned earlier on about uh, this thing called a unit vector, right? So the unit vector of A is actually 1 over square root 14, okay, and 2 over square root 14, and 3 over square root 14. And you start to realize that, hey, these values here, these numbers here all looks pretty familiar because the 1 over square root 14 is actually the cosine of the theta x. Okay, so I need to scroll. So this thing here is actually the cosine of the theta x. So in another words, it can be rewritten as cosine theta x. And uh, this value here, 2 over square 14, is the cosine of the theta y. So it's the cosine of theta y. And likewise, this is the cosine of the theta z. Okay, now, so this is what it's called the directional cosine. All right, what the directional cosine actually says is that any unit vector you have, Okay, I mean, as long as there's a vector and you can find a unit vector, right? Any unit vector is actually the directional cosine. In, in other words, the unit vector, the coordinates of the unit vector, the, the, this value, this value, and this value, they are actually the cosine theta x, cosine theta y, and cosine theta z. That means to say, once you have the unit vector, you can actually find the angle that the vector makes with the x, y, z axis respectively.